Okay, now that we looked at those algebraic constructs, we can actually check when do multiplicative inverses in rings exist. Well, let's take an let's make an example. So, we want to find the multiplicative inverse of five modulo twenty. So, in other words, we work in this ring, z twenty z. So we can write this as the following equation. 5 times x is equivalent to 1 modulo 20, right? Because 1 is the multiplicative identity element, the neutral element. So that's the x we need to find. The x is the inverse of 5. In other words, we can also rewrite this because, as we have seen, the equivalence means that all solutions are of the form 1 plus a multiple of 20. So let's just rewrite it here, say okay, 5 times its multiplicative inverse modulo 20 is equal to 1 plus a multiple of 20. So can the left side actually with any value of x match the right side with any value of, value of n. To visualize that I've drawn the number line here and as you can see the top is the left side so multiples of 5 for different values of x 0, 5, 10, 15, 20 and so on and so on. Different values of x make multiples of 5. The right side possible solutions for different values of n are some here shown in red, so it would be 1, if n is 0, then it would be 21, then it would be 41, and very quickly you can see a pattern. You can see that, okay, the possible solutions on the right side are always one apart from possible solutions of the left side. So no matter how long these number lines go, there's no possible solutions that fulfill the right side and the left side. No matter what value for x or for n we put in. So actually 5 doesn't have an inverse modulo 20. But why is that? Well, here I've plotted the numbers that have an inverse modulo 20. So it's 1, 3, 7, 9, 11, 13 and so on and so forth. Numbers that don't have an inverse are 0, 2, 4, 5, 6, 15, and maybe you'll find a pattern. Maybe you'll see what kind of numbers don't have an inverse. Although it's quite difficult maybe to see on first sight. Well, it turns out all multiples of 2 and of 5 do not have an inverse. And why is that? Well, in a ring, an element has an inverse if it does not have a common divisor with n. So, if the greatest common divisor between the element and the modulus is 1, meaning they don't have any divisors in common, then the element a has an inverse modulo n. A multiplicative inverse. If this is the case, the greatest common divisor of those two numbers is 1, we call those numbers usually co-prime. a and n are co-prime, sometimes they're called relatively prime, and the mathematical notation is this here. So we can briefly verify this by looking at the numbers so 10 uh, and 20, the greatest common divisor is 5, not 1, so 10 doesn't have an inverse. 2 and 20, 12 and 20, well they have the common divisor 2, so the greatest common divisor is not 1, so they are not co-prime, so 12 also doesn't have an inverse in the ring um, modulo 20.